Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here, and we've looked at penny stocks before. In fact, it's one of the most popular topics on the channel, with stocks like Ryerson up over eight times your money, and an average return of 33% on our penny stock list. This video though, I wanna talk about those next level penny stocks, the companies revolutionizing their industry, and the penny stocks that could 10X your money, two of which I've already invested over $10,000. I wanna get started with graphene manufacturing, ticker GMGMF, but stick around because next, I'm gonna show you how to find these and how to invest in penny stocks. Nation, the big bottleneck in electric vehicles right now is not car production, but batteries with the price of lithium surging. That's because we're facing a severe shortage of the metal. Standard & Poor's estimates that even if all 53 lithium projects are developed, we'd still be looking at a deficit of 600,000 tons by 2030. With the increase in EV sales, we're already in a deficit on existing mines, and it's only gonna get worse, driving up the cost and slowing production of green technologies. In fact, this is expected to be so bad that Chile is planning on nationalizing its lithium industry, putting state control on all projects by 2030. That news sent major lithium miners like Albemarle and SQM down 15% and more on a single day. But graphene here could have the solution with an alternative graphene aluminum battery and it could be the next disruptive technology in alternative energy. The batteries would have a higher energy density compared to lithium which means it's going to have longer battery life, up to three times longer, and can be charged up to 70 times faster. And best of all, the process starts with a low cost natural gas and graphene, both in abundant supply all over the world. So even if this can replace just a fraction of that lithium market which is a 10 billion dollars in annual revenue just for Albemarle alone, it could create a company worth billions of dollars, all from a stock valued at just 136 million today. And GMG has an exclusive partnership with the University of Queensland and recently announced an initial factory testing for a prototype battery. It already has regulatory approval for commercial sales and several corporate partnerships. Nation growth to just a billion dollars market cap would be a seven times on the current price, but understand this is very much an all or nothing investment. Cash flow and earnings are deeply negative, though it does have more than $12 million in balance sheet cash to, to prove out the idea. If it can move on to commercialization though and take just some of that lithium market, this could be a game changer. And here you can see I bought 5,000 shares of GMGMF for one of my investing accounts back in April here at $1.51 per share. That's now worth over $8,000. This stock is up 10% so far, but it's not that short-term gain I'm looking for. I'm investing for that 10x potential. And now here, that actually brings up a very important point in this penny stock investing, something that loses a lot of money for a lot of investors. Now I could take my quick 10% return here, but I'm gonna show you later how this is very similar to startup investing and how a lot of these super small stocks will go bust. That means you need the winners to do a hell of a lot more than just that 10% return. Even if GMG jumped two or three times my money, I think it can go even higher than that, and I need to give the company time to prove that growth. A great example here, investors in Netflix at the 2002 IPO got in for just a dollar a share when the company was still valued at just $400 million and could have booked a return of 38 times their money by 2011. But those patient investors, the ones that really gave the company time to grow into its potential, could have made as much as 680 times their investment, turning just 2,000 into $1.2 million. So we're just getting started on that next level penny stock list, but I wanna show you what I'm looking for here, how these are different from those other penny stocks that I'm watching, and, and how you can find these stocks for yourself. So for any penny stock, I'm gonna be looking first for a growth trend or an industry that's gonna support that company's growth. It's like that kind of big picture approach that makes it easy for a smaller company to grow because even a two or 3% market share could mean hundreds of millions of dollars in sales. Well, what I'm talking about in these next level penny stocks though is going beyond just that growth trend and trying to solve a problem in those trends. Where is the bottleneck or the limiting factor in that growth industry? So with these penny stocks, they aren't just participating in that growth industry, they're trying to revolutionize it. So now the risk here though is that even within that growth industry, if the company's solution doesn't become a basic practice of the industry, that stock might not do well. If graphene manufacturing cannot develop a lithium battery alternative that is widely used, then the company's gonna bankrupt even as EV cars take over the roads. Now to manage that risk, I wanna be narrowing our list of penny stocks to those with balance sheets strong enough to give them that time to prove out their solution. We see in graphene's cash flow statement here that the company is burning through 7.5 million a year in operations and investment. 
Now, I need to see that the balance sheet has enough cash on hand and a low enough debt that the company can survive and until it's been able to bring that solution to the market. Next is the smallest company on our list. At just $91 million market cap, Surge Pays Inc, ticker SURG. Surge Pay is a B2B or business to business fintech helping small retail businesses provide financial and other prepaid products to the underbanked and low income. The acquisition of Torch Wireless gives it direct consumer access as well, availability in all 50 states and over 65,000 subscribers. And I actually think this could be more of an acquisition target down the road than growth into a giant financial company because this kind of financial digital services are exactly what a larger companies need to, to really evolve. So it might not be long before someone makes an offer. Revenue has grown at a 67% annual pace from just 25 million in 2019 to over 121 million last year and the company is free cash flow positive. It's one of the few penny stocks you'll find that is cash flow positive as well as net cash positive on its balance sheet. So this one is not only growing very quickly, but also financially healthy and continuing that growth. We've still got three more penny stocks to highlight, but Nation, I do not want you just jumping into any of these stocks just because you see them here. There are a lot of yahoos here on YouTube and following them blindly into a stock pick does not make for a good investing strategy. That's why I want to get you started with a quick start guide to the analysis that I do when I'm looking for stocks to buy. I'll leave a link below in the description to the step-by-step -step guide to the five points you need to look for and how to find each. This is the analysis I learned how to do through more than 10 years as a venture capital analyst and in private wealth management. It's totally free. Just follow the link below to get your step-by-step -step guide. Please folks, I want you to know how to control your money and be a better investor so you know if a stock is right for you, not just because some bozo in a bow tie said he bought it. These next two penny stocks are in the healthcare sector. First, $154 million Augmetics, ticker AUGX. The company offers automated medical transcription and data services, converting natural conversation into comprehensive medical notes and analysis with automatic speech recognition and natural language processing. Now that system alone can save up to three hours a day and boost productivity by 20% for healthcare workers. This is a $6 billion market and Augmetics has been growing revenue by 38% annually to 9.6 million in the first quarter. And the company just wrapped up $12 million in strategic financing, including from HCA Healthcare, that should get it to cash flow positive by the end of next year. It's net cash positive with $22 million in balance sheet cash against just $15 million in long-term debt, so plenty of runway here. And what I'm thinking here is an opportunity that not even the company is talking about. The opportunity to combine that automated medical transcriptioning with some kind of generative AI solution, not just to save time by suggesting treatments, but also on all that data that the company's software is collecting. Now, I like the company's product as a standalone with billions of potential revenue, but that AI component would revolutionize the sector. Another healthcare penny stock here, this time in medical devices with Tila Bio, ticker T-E-L-A. The company designs and markets tissue reinforcement materials for soft tissue reconstruction, focusing right now on the $1.5 billion market for hernia repair, which is more than a million procedures annually, and the 700 million opportunity in plastic and reconstructive surgeries, but this technology can be extended to so many other uses. Tila grew revenue by 45% over the last year to $12 million, even while improving gross profitability, increasing the gross margin to 67% of sales. Now this one is still pretty deeply cash flow negative. Here you see operational cash flow was negative $40 million last year. We got 43 million in financing in April and has 42 million in balance sheet cash. So it does have some runway for growth, but this is probably the riskiest of the group in terms of finances. Now that doesn't necessarily make it the riskiest penny stock though. It has a proven product and is ramping up sales quickly, so this might not be that all or nothing scenario that we see in some of these other stocks, but the risk is whether the company will have the time with that cash that it needs to grow. We've still got one of the smallest penny stocks on the list and one I invested $5,000 in, but investing in these kinds of 10x potential stocks isn't like the rest of the market. This is very much like startup investing or venture capital where I worked for years. Nation, in this type of investing, you want no more than maybe 10 or 15% of your total wealth and at most maybe 1% of your money in each penny stock. Now I know that might sound like it's not gonna amount to much. Why would you only invest a percent or two of your portfolio in a stock that could 10X your money? The problem here folks, and this is a chart I've shared here before, is that these kinds of nano cap penny stock companies can be an all or nothing investment and you should expect about half to fail. This shows the percent of profitable investments and the multiples on invested money for angel investors. So these are professional startup investors and even they see between 50 and 60% of their startups return less than the money they invested. 
That's the bar on the far left here. Five out of 10 startups return less than is invested or nothing at all. Now the risk is a little lower in these penny stock companies. These companies have already developed a product, have gone through the regulatory work to go public and have more financial flexibility than you usually see with startups. But the two types of investing are still very similar. I spent a lot of years learning how to do this type of early stage investing. And you can see, even though we've had some huge winners here, 800%, 200% returns, about half the stocks are down over the last few years. Now back to that investing rule though, with just one or maybe 2% of your money in each penny stock, you're not gonna be freaking out when the price falls. In fact, you probably won't even notice it in your overall portfolio value. You won't panic, you won't sell out of the stock, and you'll be able to give the company the time it needs to grow, and even some of these losers are gonna turn around for very strong returns. But the beauty of these penny stocks is, for the ones that do five or 10 times and more times your investment, then even a small amount is gonna boost your overall portfolio. Even at just 2% of your portfolio, a stock that jumps 10X is gonna boost your overall portfolio return by 20%. Put a few of these winners together then, and you've got a strong double digit returns on your entire portfolio. Now for the rest of your portfolio, check out these seven stocks I'm buying for the next 30 years. Seven stocks in some of the best long-term growth trends. I found Altimmune Inc, ticker ALT, while researching a video on weight loss drug stocks. This biotech pharmaceutical is focused on developing treatments for obesity and liver diseases with two indications in phase two trials and results expected by the end of the year. Now these shares did plunge 60% in March when the 24 week trial results showed that while average weight loss was 10% over the study, a higher incidence of side effects caused 24% dropout rate among patients. But that could be an opportunity for new investors as results were much better than the share price reflects. The 24 week trial of 160 patients showed an average weight loss of 11%. And while that's less than the 15% average weight loss from popular drugs like Ozempic, it's doing it on a trial in half the time. Now the side effects and the dropout rate could be mitigated on some dose adjustments and that gets this one back on track. We're expecting full 48 week trial results later by the end of the year. Considering this is a billion dollar drug candidate on a company valued at under 200 million, any good news on that phase two test could be a big upside. Now I bought a thousand shares of Altimmune in May after researching it for that weight loss drug stock video. The shares were up initially, but have since fallen 20%. Again though, you cannot panic and sell out of these types of penny stocks until you've given them a chance to prove that solution. I still think Altimmune could surge on those phase two trial results over the next six months. Get your free quick start stock analysis guide with the link below or click on the video to the right for the seven stocks I'm buying for the next 30 years, my forever stocks. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.